Hey, this is Scott, and today we're going to go in-depth into the mobile app for iPhone for the FreeVision mobile app together with the Vilta Mobile M. So I'm in the app now, and I do not have the gimbal turned on yet, so I'm going to go ahead and turn that on now. And as I turn it on, we're just going to click Connect, and it will come up with the Vilta, and just go right into the app, no problem, super easy. And let's just take a look at first what we have on screen. On the top left, you'll see the battery level for both your iPhone and for the Vilta, which is very nice. You have a number of options down the left and a number down the right as well. On the right side, we do have some options to switch between photo and video, and some of the menu options will change depending on which mode you're in, so just be aware of that. On the top right, we have the Bluetooth icon, which you can tap to connect to your gimbal if you turn it off while you have the app open, for example, and you turn it back on. You need to reconnect. That's where you're going to do that. And then we have some other options on the right as well, but we're going to go through these one by one. Starting on the top left, we have your advanced options, advanced settings. We have four different tabs for camera, gimbal, joystick, and info. Info is not really options or settings, it's just kind of information. Uh, but let's look at these in order. For camera, we have the photo resolution. You can choose high resolution to be on or off. And it does give you a note on screen that the front camera, beauty, or filter modes can't support high resolution. Um, so it's nice that they kind of have all the information there. There's no surprises. They tell you what's up. Under that, we have the video resolutions. There's a bunch of choices here for iPhone from 720 at uh, 30 frames per second, 1080 at 30 and 60 frames per second, as well as 4K at 30 and 60 frames per second. There is a note under there as well telling you the front camera or IntelliTrace, the tracking mode, can, cannot support 4K resolution for video. Uh, when we get into the tracking mode later, I'll have a couple more notes about that. Under that, you can choose your panorama quality for photos, uh, high, medium, or low, and the different focusing modes for your panorama. So you can have it autofocus or lock focus before it takes the photo. Lock focus will avoid having any weird effects where the focus is at different distances in different parts of the panoramic photo. So it's nice to have the option to switch between those. You can choose to save the panorama as a single panorama, which I think is logical. And you can also choose to save these to only the app or to save to both the uh, app and the album or only your phone and album. So I like to have that option like the Zhiyun app, for example. You always have to go through the process of going into the app's photo library and then saving all of those to your phone itself. This you have a lot of options and that's really nice. Under the gimbal tab, you have some different settings for the gimbal. The first one is your scene mode setting. You have three, walk mode, sport mode, and custom mode. In walk mode and sport mode, it will automatically choose some follow speeds that are appropriate for those two things. And in custom mode, you can choose yourself uh, for each of the pan, tilt, and roll access, the follow speed. And if you're not sure what follow speed really means, you can click right under that and it gives you a nice on-screen explanation. Under that, we have the dead band setting. And again, if you don't know what dead band setting is, you can click under that and it will give you another on-screen on explanation, which is very clear, very helpful, and it will tell you kind of what the effect is going to be if you adjust these settings. So again, you can choose that or adjust that for the tilt, pan, and roll axis. Under that, you have the uh, options for the mode, but mode button and toggle joystick. As I mentioned in my review of this, if you hold down the button and move the toggle joystick left and right, it can adjust the roll axis, but you do have the option to switch that over to adjusting exposure as well. So again, there's even more functionality that you can access through this app. Under that, phone detection is related to the sensor that's on the grip, which I mentioned before. If you don't have a phone in here, it will stop it from turning on to avoid damaging the motors. Very nice function. Uh, but if you want to use an action cam in this, for example, something that does not cover that sensor, uh, in order to get it to turn on with the cover not censored, you can turn this off here. Under that is the gimbal calibration, and we'll just quickly go over that now. It's very, very simple. When you click that, it will tell you to uh, prepare for calibration, take down your phone, which means put down or take off your phone, and the device will automatically sleep. So click prepare, it will go to sleep so you can remove your phone from the grip. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that quickly. And then it gives you a very nice uh, image here of how you should place your gimbal. So uh, just place your gimbal so that way it looks like that. Um, it's a little tricky to kind of get it to lay like that at first. But once you have those three red points touching your table just like it is in the picture, go ahead and press start and it will be calibrating and it tells you do not move your device during this process. So just wait for, it says 30 seconds, but it doesn't usually take that long. So let's see how long it takes in this case. So now it's finished. 
and it says, please take up your device, which I mean, pick up your device and mount your phone before you tap finish. So go ahead and pick up your gimbal, get your phone back in there, which I'll do right now. And then once you have your phone back in there, you can go ahead and click finish and the gimbal will kind of reactivate. Uh, the menu is kind of weird after this, so I'm just gonna back out of it once and then come back to it. Um, and let's take a look at the next menu. We finished the gimbal menu, that's the end of that menu. So let's go over to the joystick. The joystick gives you the uh, ability to adjust the smoothness of each axis, the tilt, pan, and roll axis, and also the joystick speed for each of those axes. And finally, also the dead band for the joystick as well. Once again, if you want to double check what that dead band means, you can click and see the on-screen explanation. So it's very clear, very easy to adjust, even if you're new to this kind of settings. Under that, the joystick direction. This is a little bit unclear as to what it does, but uh, basically it reverses the direction. So if you check up and down, uh, up and down will make the gimbal move up and down in the opposite direction of what it usually does. So let's uncheck it and go back out. And when you move it up and down, the phone itself will point up or down relatively speaking. So up is up and down is down. But if you go back into here, check the up and down option, then when you press up, it will move the opposite direction. So you can reverse the direction of the joystick right in this menu uh, for the joystick. Last option, check or uncheck. You can do that separately for up and down and left and right. So you can choose just one or you can choose both uh, if you want to reverse either of those. And that's the last of the joystick menu. Finally, in the info menu, you have a couple of different uh, choices. You can check the gimbal battery info, and there's actually quite a lot of information here, which is really nice. As well as the gimbal info, it'll tell you a whole bunch about the uh, firmware that's in here and about the app itself. So if you wanna check out uh, what you're working with at any point, you can see it right there. Under that, we have a kind of quick menu for the gimbal itself. It has some of those same things that we saw in the uh, advanced setting menu, but uh, for example, the scene mode, you can quickly access it here. We're in custom mode now, so you can quickly adjust that from here or move over to sport or walking mode. And you can also choose the follow mode from here. So you can do this from the gimbal handle itself, uh, but you do have the choice between four follow modes through the app as well, including POV mode. Finally, under that, you have the gimbal manual mode. You can turn that on and off, but to be completely honest, I don't know what this does. I can't figure it out. I'm gonna get in touch with FreeVision and I will put this on screen uh, when this video is uploaded. Under that, we have the camera menu, which will give you uh, some different options depending if you're in photo or video mode, as I mentioned before. We're in photo mode now, so let's go through this real quick. Uh, we have the time lapse. It's called time lapse, but this is actually just a kind of delay. Um, so you can set a two second, five second, or 10 second delay. This is if you want to take a group photo, for example. When you push that, it'll give you the countdown. You can run out in front of the camera, join the group, and then it will take your photo. Uh, if we go back into that again and turn it off, our next option is the panorama option. There are a couple different flavors of this. You can do 180 degree panorama, 330 degree panorama, three by three grid or a three by five grid. I think that the three by three grid is pretty interesting. So I'm gonna show you that now. So let's just choose that. And then once you take a photo, it will automatically uh, select your position for a three by three grid to take kind of a larger photo than you would normally be able to take. So as you can see, it's moving automatically to the different positions it needs to move to, to make that three by three grid. It'll compose it for you. And once it's done composing, the picture itself will pop up so you can see it. So you can see you get kind of a larger photo, not necessarily a wider photo like a normal panorama, but a larger photo. So I think that's really cool. You can do three by three or three by five, depending on your situation, as well as some standard panoramas. So click X to get back to your camera. We're gonna go ahead and turn that off for now and check out our other options. Long exposure, there's also a couple different flavors of this. Double exposure, um, double exposure is kind of a misnomer, uh, but what it will do is it will kind of activate the camera and you can start and stop it like a video, but it will kind of just make it into one photo. So if I start it, um, it looks like it's just taking a slow, slow exposure, I guess you could say. But if I put my hand in front of it, you can see slowly my hand will come into view and so in this sense, it's kind of like a double exposure um, over a period of time. So if I stop that, it'll save it and we'll go ahead and just take a look at that. This is the kind of result you get. So it's like a double exposure effectively. Um, the other option that you have in that menu, uh, let's go back to the camera, long exposure and light trail. 
you can probably get an idea of what this is, um, but it's basically like a more reactive of version of the double exposure. So if I start this, as I move my hand in front, you can see what happens. It looks like the light trail, like if you had cars driving by or something like that. In this case, it's just my hand, but um, you can see the difference here between those two different versions of long exposures. Uh, this last light trail one gives you like a light trail. So if you do have cars driving by, that could be a cool option to use. It definitely gets some interesting results. So let's go ahead and turn that off for now. And again, continue looking at what else we have. Your filters are pretty self-explanatory. They're filters. Uh, beauty cam, I'm gonna, it's pretty embarrassing, but I'm gonna turn on the reverse cam just to give you an idea of how this works. Uh, but the beauty cam is like a skin softener, basically. Now let me reverse the camera and do that again. Hey, this is really embarrassing, but um, you have a kind of degree on the side here where you can adjust if you want it closer to a natural effect, which is just like having it turned off, or if you want to have really s smooth white and skin, you can see my face. It will automatically um, detect faces in here, and you can adjust that for how kind of high natural or how uh, white skinned it says, how smooth you want it to be. So uh, it's nice that you have some control over it. You can get a little bit of this effect without overdoing it. Um, so it's pretty cool. I'm going to turn this back to the front camera and go ahead and turn beauty cam off. HDR is pretty self-explanatory. It's HDR. Uh, the white balance, you can go ahead and choose auto or a few different options. Grid also has a couple of different flavors. You have grids and diagonals, just a grid or your center point here. Uh, you can see the center point like that. And let's turn that off for now. And camera manual mode will give you this menu at the top where you can go in and adjust some different settings manually. Um, you can adjust each of them manually or you can leave some of them auto. If you change something and you wanna go back to auto, just click auto at the right side and it will reset it to auto. Um, this is going to be similar when we go over to video, um, but it's nice. It's very simple and easy to control your manual settings just like that. Finally, at the bottom, we have an X. This will just X out of the menu that you're in. Or if you press it again, it will back out to the main menu of the app. You can just click connect again to jump back into that. And we will move over to the right side. On the top right, we have our library, which I've already gone into a couple of times. Uh, here we have the photos and videos separated into two different uh, folders here. And let's take a look at the photo, for example. If you click into it, you have some different options. You can see the information, the date, and the size of the photo, as well as this bottom left button will actually let you uh, save it or send it by email or something like that, the typical menu that you get when you try to share something. You could save this. Um, if you have the option set to only save your photos and videos to this app's library, you can save individual photos and videos to your camera's library by this little hard disk icon in the bottom here. In the middle, you have the edit option where you can go and adjust a whole bunch of different features. Um, this is for photo, so you have quite a lot of uh, different options here. But for video, there will be a couple of less options. I'll show you that in just a second. And on the bottom right, you can delete individual photos. I'm going to go over to the video here and just show you the different options for editing. You can trim your video uh, as you would a normal video on the iPhone. And you can also kind of retouch it with some uh, filters here. There's a bunch of different stuff you can do. You can add music and uh, there is some different options here. You can choose by category. Uh, it's kind of nice if you want to edit right in this app. You can do that if you want to. I'm going to get out of here for now and go back to your main camera. Under the library, you have your tracking option. It's technically called IntelliTrace for this app. Uh, but I, right now, I'm set in 4K. So as I push that, you'll get a notification saying that 4K resolution does not support tracking and has been automatically switched to 1080p. As I showed you in the advanced settings menu before, when you're choosing your video resolution, it does give you a note that IntelliTrack, IntelliTrace sorry, does not work with 4K. But this is what will happen. It will automatically switch to 1080p for you. As a side note, I had it in 4K 60p before, and if you go, it switches into 1080 30 frames per second, but 1080 at 60 frames per second does work with IntelliTrace. So if you want to use 1080p at 60 frames per second with IntelliTrace, just make sure that you go in there and manually choose it, because if you're in 4K and it sets you back to 1080p, it will be 1080p 30 frames per second, even if you were in 60 frames per second at 4K before that. The tracing works pretty standardly. You just draw a box around whatever you want to trace and it will automatically follow that. 
It works really well to turn it off. Just click that icon again and it's off. Um, as far as I can tell, it's very functional. It follows very, very consistently and accurately. And I'm very, very pleased with the performance of it. Under that, you have the uh, photo shutter button or start and stop record button. And again, as you switch back and forth between photo and video modes, this will change. Um, regardless of what mode you are in, the button on the actual gimbal itself will function the same. If you single push it, it will take a photo. And if you long push it, it will start and stop video. However, this button on the actual screen will function differently. So if you're in photo mode, it will take a photo. If you're in video mode, it will take a video. So if you're not using the button on the gimbal itself and you are pushing the button on your actual screen, be aware of what mode you're in and just know that it will take a photo or video depending on which mode that is. Under that, we have the button to reverse the camera, which we did before and I'm not going to do again because it's embarrassing. And then under that, we have some options for the light. We have the consistent light bulb for video. And we also have a couple of different flavors of flash. You have automatic flash or you have um, just always flash on when you're taking photos. And you can also turn the flash off here with the option next to the light bulb. Finally, uh, since the options in video mode for the camera are a little bit different, let's just go through that really quick. So I've switched over into video mode and we're going to look at the camera menu once more. On the top now we have slow motion. And um, of course you can take 60p video in both 1080 and 4K and it will just save as a normal video, bring it into your computer or something, and you can put that in a 30, fr 30 frames per second timeline and effectively get slow motion. But uh, this will save as slow motion in the camera automatically. So if I take a quick video and just kind of put my hand in front of the camera here uh, and then go into that video, let's check out the result. You can see that this is going to automatically be uh, slow motion and it's pretty significant slow motion. I'm not sure of the exact uh, frames per second or slow motion factor that we have going here, but I think it's definitely more than putting 60 frames per second into a 30, 30 frames per second timeline. So if you want really slow motion, this could be a good option for you. I'm just going to click done on the top here and back out of that. Going back into the menu, let's turn slow motion off and you can turn the beauty cam on and off again. And this is exactly the same as it was in photo mode. So I'm going to turn that off for now. Filters are the same as before and time lapse here. We have a couple of more options compared to the other time lapse, which wasn't really time lapse. It's more like a delay. Uh, in this time lapse, you can control the shutter interval. Um, you have something between 0.5 seconds and the maximum is four seconds. No, it's not. Uh, you can keep going. You can actually keep going quite a bit. I'm not sure if there's a limit here. There may not be, um, but this is pretty crazy. If you go up to 30 second shutter intervals, uh, but you can choose your shutter interval there. And let's say, for example, I set it at one second and then you choose your full time duration. This is the time that you're actually taking video. So if you set it to 10 minutes, for example, it will tell you under that, that that result will result in a 20 second video. So um, if you know how long of a video clip you want, it's really nice that it tells you that. So you can go ahead and you know fool around with these seconds. If you want a shorter video, only 10 seconds then switch the shutter interval to two seconds. If you want longer, go back to one seconds or 0.5 seconds, and you can see the resulting video's time length will change. This is very easy to use, very simple, uh, very effective, and it seems to work wonderfully. Under that, you also do have motion time lapse. This is um, also pretty cool in the way that it works. Uh, you just click the plus to choose your starting point, move it to a second point, click the plus. You can add three or four points to this if you want, and you can choose to do auto motion time lapse or manual. Um, just quickly, I'll show you the manual option. This kind of graphs out those two points that you chose on an actual graph here. So I moved to the right and I moved the camera up and you can see that on this graph here. You can physically draw a line between these two points of how you want it to move. If you want it to move in a squiggly line or if you want it to move in a straight line or if you want it to move in like a triangle pattern and then go straight down and you can really have a lot of control over this. You can literally draw the path on screen, which is really cool. Um, and then if you confirm it, it will just go ahead and do that for you. I'm going to exit out of here and you can also choose auto. Auto will give you the option to adjust the smoothness of the path. So that'll be just obviously how smooth it is if it, if it curves, you know, if you have three points or four points, how it curves around those points, how smoothly that motion will be. Um, I, I would personally set it to five most of the time. And as you go into the next step, again, you can choose just like before the shutter interval, the time duration, and then it will tell you the resulting videos time then click start and it will go ahead and do that for you. Really, really cool. I love the amount of control here. The manual option is really cool. You can literally see on a graph 
where your different frames are and then draw a line between them. So you have so much control over that and it works really well. Very, very fun to do. The next option in this menu is a motion lapse, not motion time lapse, motion lapse. And that is largely the same, except that um, it's not a time lapse. So if I go ahead and do that, you can still draw the manual path between these two points. And uh, for example, if I confirm it, it will go into the next menu where you can choose the time duration. This is just a video. Um, it will move as you're taking the video, but it's just a video. So a 10 second time duration will generate a 10 second video. A 30 second time duration will generate a 30 second video. That's the only difference between the motion time lapse and the motion lapse. Uh, but it's cool. It works exactly the same otherwise uh, in terms of how you can draw that path and choose your points and everything. So very, very cool. Again, pretty fun to work with. Under that, you have your white balance. Again, it's exactly the same as in photo. You can choose your grids and you can also switch over to camera manual mode, which works exactly the same as in photo mode. So we're going to go ahead and turn that camera manual mode off. And that is about it for this application. Um, again, I hope you could see it through this, but my favorite points about this application are that the menu, the advanced menu, for example, gives you a lot of explanations on screen about uh, what different things do, how they work, what the effect will be. So it's very easy to dive in really deep, even for new users. Really, really nice. And also things like the uh, time lapse, the motion time lapse. I love the amount of customization that you have here, the ability to literally draw on screen the path that you want it to take. Um, is really, really cool and something that I haven't seen. Um, and it works well. I mean, I've used it a couple of times and it, it works exactly how it should work. So um, not only is it cool and fun and pretty advanced, but it's also very functional. So it works very well. I haven't had any bugs. I haven't had any uh, freezing up or errors or anything like that. Everything has been very smooth for me, at least up until now. So I definitely love this app and that, that's a big deal because that's a big part of uh, the functionality of this gimbal. So having something that works so well is definitely reassuring in terms of the quality of the system overall as a whole system, the gimbal and the app together. So I hope that was helpful. I hope I didn't kind of run through things too fast. I hope I could show you a good example of how each of these things work. But if you do have any questions, be sure to let me know down in the comments below and then I will definitely get back to you. If you like this video or found it helpful, don't forget to give me a thumbs up, share it if you want, subscribe to see more in the future. And as always, thank you for watching.